Morning everyone and thank you for attending today's webinar. I'm Eliza Strapp, First Assistant Secretary from the Aged Care Market and Workforce Division at the Department of Health and Aged Care and I'll be co-hosting this event with Jane Watts, the Employer Liaison Officer within the National Workforce Solutions Branch at the Department of Employment and Workplace Relations or um, otherwise known as DUA. This is the first of three webinars running from September to November which forms part of our employer engagement series. Today's webinar will provide a broad outline of the programs and supports that are being offered to assist aged care providers across home care and residential aged care to attract workers into their workplace. We'd like to ensure that at the end of this session, you have enough information to be able to link in with your local DUA and Department of Health and Aged Care representatives to pursue further assistance to access these programs. I'd um, like to begin with an acknowledgement of country and as I'm coming to you from um, Ngunnawal lands in uh, Canberra, I am going to do um, the welcome in um, Ngunnawal, Ngunnawal language. Dawan Nuna, Dawan Ngunnawal. Yangu Nala Mangin, Duni Mangin. Ngunnawal Wari, Dawa Wari, Dindi, Waragalin, Wangaralin, Jinyin. This is Ngunnawal country. Today, we are all meeting together on Ngunnawal country. We acknowledge and pay our respects to the elders. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners and custodians of all the lands that you are meeting from, acknowledging where we're um, joining from all parts of Australia. Um, today's webinar will be split into two sessions and you're encouraged to attend both. The first session will cover programs uh, run through my department, including the Workforce Advisory Service, or the, the WAS, the Aged Care Registered Nurses Payment, and the Home Care Workforce Support Program. Session two will cover dual supports, including Workforce Australia and local employment facilitators. Each session will include a 10-minute Q&A session, so you'll have the opportunity to ask us specific questions. There will also be guest speakers presenting from PwC, CODA, Queensland Consortia Skills Hub and an employment, employment facilitator from TUA who will also be answering questions live during the Q&A session. There will be an opportunity to post questions throughout the session via the question submissions box on your screen and it's on the bottom right corner. Click on the three dots and we will prioritise questions behind the scenes and post the ones we are responding to on your screen. Questions sent through in advance during the registration process have also been considered for the Q&A session. Uh, there's no option for attendees to turn their video or microphone on. However, the session will be recorded and uploaded onto our website along with the slides. Finally, there's a short survey for you to complete at the conclusion of this webinar. It will automatically pop up in your screen after you close the event. So I really encourage you to do that survey so we can uh, make sure we're hitting the mark with these webinars. I'm uh, really happy to welcome now Karen Dillon from PwC, who will talk to you about the Workforce Advisory Service. Thanks, Eliza. Hello, my name is Karen Dillon and I'm a director at PwC. I work with a national team across Australia to deliver the free and confidential Workforce Advisory Service, or WAS program, as it's affectionately known. PwC was commissioned by the Department of Health and Aged Care to deliver the WAS alongside the Business Advisory Service. Through the WAS, we support aged care providers to build upon the capability and capacity of your workforce and improve your human resources practices. We provide insights and practical solutions, including tools and templates for specific issues you may be facing in relation to your workforce, recruitment and retention. We identify and share industry best practice on topics such as attraction and recruitment strategies, culture and continuous feedback, leadership and development, health and wellbeing, and reward and recognition. We also support the improvement of skills and training delivery for providers beyond mandatory training to improve the quality of care being delivered to senior Australians. And we assist providers to identify strategies in relation to ongoing professional development and career pathways for their workforce. So, what will your organisation receive from participating in the WAS? Firstly, you'll receive access to an interactive visual dashboard on your workforce demographics and live but de-identified benchmarking data against other providers. 
This will help you to get a better understanding of what your workforce actually looks like and identify current hotspots and risks for attention. These benchmarks will be continually updated as more providers enter the program. You'll also attend a two hour workshop with experts from our firm to discuss your current HR practices. We'll work with you virtually to understand the lived experience of your data and to identify where there may be areas for improvement across your HR practices. This is so the recommendations we provide to you are tailored to the specific issues you are facing. You'll receive a maturity assessment of your HR processes, which will, which will provide your organisation with key diagnostic information about the maturity of your, your workforce and HR practices. Ultimately, you'll receive a tailored report with practical and implementable recommendations to assist your organisation in identifying action items to improve your HR practices and workforce management. You also obtain information about other support programs which are available across government, some of which we'll be talking about today, and we will share insights and opportunities that we have uncovered through the program. We are also, of course, a point of contact for ideas and questions you may have about your workforce and human resource practices after our workshop with you. A huge benefit of this program is ongoing access to an ever-growing library of templates and tools to assist you to implement the recommendations you receive in your report, which can be tailored to your specific needs. And lastly, we'll check in with you at six months and 12 months after our workshop and after you receive your report to discuss the impact of the recommendations and to provide you with an opportunity to conduct a trend analysis over your workforce data. The application portal for the WAS is available on the PwC website. We look forward to welcoming you to the program. Thanks so much, Eliza. Thanks, Karen, for your presentation. Um, Karen will also be around to respond to your questions in the Q&A session. And I'm just reminding people that um, the Q&A, you can put your questions in. It's a little question box at the bottom, a little box with a question mark on it. And that's how you uh, can put your Q&A in. Uh, the next measure we'll be covering is the aged care registered nurses payment. This payment recognises the vital role registered nurses undertake in the provision of high quality aged care services regarding the clinical skills and the leadership they bring to the sector. It will assist in the attraction and retention of registered nurses. We know providers are struggling to build their workforce, so this is an additional incentive for workers to remain in aged care. The initiative runs over two years, from 2022 to 23, to 2023 to 24. Payments are available for registered nurses who work in the same aged care employer over either six months or 12 month eligibility periods with eligible aged care providers. It's important to note that eligible providers will need to apply on behalf of the registered nurses they directly employ at the end of the eligibility periods. So nurses themselves will not be able to apply for the payment. Organisations that can apply for payments on behalf of their employees are Australian government funded approved residential aged care providers, home care providers, including those that deliver home care packages and the Commonwealth Home Support Program, the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Flexible Aged Care Program providers, multi-purpose service providers that offer aged care services, and agency, agencies or brokers employing aged care registered nurses to work in one of the above organisation types. So agencies and brokers will be required to identify the applicable aged care providers with whom they are contracted to provide aged care workers. And also self-employed nurse practitioners can apply for the payment. So I want to highlight that um, particularly that eligible providers apply on behalf of the registered nurses they directly employ. Agency Agencies and brokers will apply for registered nurses working for them, but contracted to an eligible provider. Registered nurses working for agencies or brokers are only eligible for payments if they are working at the same eligible aged care provider or providers for the entire eligibility period. And as mentioned earlier, registered nurses do not apply on their own behalf, except for nurse practitioners who contract their services. They apply as a broker. But I would encourage if there are registered nurses on the, um, 
on the webinar today to talk to your um, your provider or your employer about um, how they're intending to access the payment. So nurses will, all, will also need to meet eligibility criteria, and this is up on the screen now. Um, so holding, and this eligibility criteria includes holding a practising registration with the Nursing and Midwifery Board uh, of Australia, the MB, M, NMBA, as a registered nurse, and being employed by the same employer for the duration of the eligibility period. So for the first um, year, these dates are the 1st of November 2022, to the 31st of October 2022, 12 months, or 1st of May 2022 to 31st of October. I think that, uh, sorry, I think that should say 2021 to 2022 in that 12 month period. Um, and then 1st of May 2022 to 30, 31 October 2022, six month period. Someone will tell me if I'm wrong. Just expanding on eligibility periods and payment amounts. So full-time aged care registered nurses can receive up to 3,700 if employed for the whole eligibility employment period from 1st of November 2021 to the 31st of October 2022 or, um, or the 1st of November 2022 to the 31st of October 2023, a lot of dates. There's also a half payment of up to $1,850 for the eligible employment period from the 1st of May 2022 to the 31st of October 2022 or the 1st of May 2023 to the 31st of October 2023. Part-time and casual nurses will receive a pro rata payment based on the hours they work and registered nurses on extended periods of paid or unpaid leave, for example, parental leave or long service leave, are still entitled to the payment based on average hours of work, work per week for the three months prior to or after returning from leave. A registered nurse who satisfies the criteria for the core payment may be eligible for an additional payment of up to $2,300 if they meet at least one of the following criteria, but also noting that um, each registered nurse is only eligible to receive one additional payment each year. So these Additional criteria include uh, working in uh, rural towns and communities and in remote and very remote communities, uh, completing of postgraduate qualifications in nursing or gerontology, business leadership or management or other health disciplines, taking on additional training responsibilities within their paid work time, including infection prevention and control lead or IPC lead, workplace clinical supervision of undergraduate nurses, clinical supervision, mentoring, educating or facilitating in an aged care transition to practice program, or an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander person who takes the lead on cultural safety training in their organisation. It's a lot of information. Applications this for this year will be open via Grant Connect from Tuesday the 1st of November 2022 and will close on Thursday the 15th of December and the dates for next year will be similar. So it will take some time for us to process the applications but the department will work as quickly as we can to get payments through to providers so that they can go into the pockets of workers. I really want to encourage employers to apply for the funding on behalf of your registered nurses as soon as you can and to pass the funds on and on as quickly as possible. If you would like to know more about the aged care registered nurses payment, please visit our website or email the department on acrnpayment at health.gov.au. That's on the slide. Just want to also remind you that these slides will be available on our website so you'll be able to find and access the links and emails shown here. I'm now going to move on to the Home Care Workforce Support Program, I'll give you a break from hearing my voice soon. Um, so uh, this program uh, included $91 million in grant funding provided over two years for targeted support to assist the aged care sector to increase the size of the personal care workforce by 13,000 new workers. The successful applicants for the Home Care Workforce Support Program were announced in February 2022 and this includes six organisations and consortia, which uh, we are funding to support home care providers. Uh, services are being provided across metropolitan, rural and remote areas across Australia for this program. 
the organisations will support home care providers with activities to attract and recruit new personal care workers to the sector through pro promotional activities to raise awareness of career opportunities in the sector and also screening potential workers for the right skills and attributes. Organisations will also support new PCWs to complete high quality training, including facilitating access to subsidies to support training, and also supporting high quality work placement opportunities in home care settings or combined with residential care settings. Organisations will also upskill the existing workforce to support new entrants to the workforce via supervision and mentoring. So here are your providers, which uh, we are supporting. And so this includes um, ACA or Apprenticeship Careers Australia, also known as Recruitment Solutions. And their target is 1,264 new pers personal care workers. Uh, um, formerly AXA, but now the Aged and Community Care Providers Association, or ACPA, with the consortia uh, partners with Powerhouse Hub, the Human Services Skills Organisation. Um, and you can see where um, these uh, organisations service on the map, um, which is targeting 3,888 new personal care workers. Code of Queensland, which is the Council on the Age in Queensland with consortium partner Skills Hub and Skills Generation, uh, who are targeting uh, recruiting 2,272 new personal care workers. And the National Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Organisation, or NACHO, and their target is 96 new personal care workers, or First Nations um, personal care workers, and they'll be recruiting in remote and very remote areas. Uh, North Metro TAFE, North Met Metropolitan TAFE WA with consortium partners South Metropolitan TAFE, Amana Living Inc and Program Skilled Workforce and their target is 1,392 new personal care workers. SSI Settlement Services International um, which and their target is 4,216 new personal care workers. So I'd really encourage you, if you're in those locations, to reach out to the organisation if you're in your region to get involved and um, get that support. Uh, I really want to highlight that Settlement Services International, Coda Queensland, Recruitment Solutions and North, North Metropolitan TAFE provide services in remote and very remote areas as well. If you'd like to know more about the um, H, the Home Care Workforce Support Program, please visit our website or email the department on ACW or AC Workforce Programs at health.gov.au. Um, and I'm now very pleased to welcome our guest speaker, Mr. David Walsh from Coda Queensland Consortium Skills Hub, who's kindly agreed to provide an outline of their experience um, as a, a organisation operating the Home Care Workforce Support Program. Welcome, David. Thanks, Eliza. And can I acknowledge the traditional owners of land where I'm coming from, the terrible people of the Yagara Nation of Brisbane Valley, home to honey, sunny Queenslanders like myself. Um, can we just move on to the next slide? That's our consortia. We're consumer centric uh, with CODA as the lead, myself in the workforce development side and our lead RTO skills generation. Um, so we've uh, established a network of regional workforce coordinators in our first quarter of operations across South East Queensland. Uh, we've de designed and implemented a candidate registration and tracking uh, process for recruitment training, vocational placement, employment and retention of the personal care workers we're drawing into the sector. Um, we've delivered eight regional uh, workforce forums targeting um, home care providers, registered training organisations, employment providers, um, government rep representatives from uh, DESI, which is now DUA, et cetera. And 350 people have come along to those, which was uh, pretty successful, we thought, and it really springboarded us into our project. Um, we've launched our program locally in South East Queensland and introduced our team and uh, met just about every provider in Queensland. Uh, we're running about 80, 85% of providers in the state, and that was a two-year KPI of achieving their first three months with our reach. And we've started to like feedback about issues in attraction and retention. We're actually seeing some of the issues in the sector coming from our data since since June. We just uh, I'll, I'll talk about that later if I've got a moment. We just move on to the next slide, please. Um, so we uh, we started off our social media campaign around late uh, June. Um, we've used LinkedIn to engage with organisations across what we call the skills ecosystem. 
those providers who come to our forums is that that's what we're calling the skills ecosystem. Um, and we meet with individual registered service providers. We develop marketing material, a day in the life of the home care worker. We've tested home care career hubs or a speed interview process. We're now rolling that out uh, across southeast Queensland. Very successful. And we've briefed target groups. So uh, senior staff have met with, um, we've met with all of the big cares in, in Queensland. 15 organisations control 80% of the marketplace, as an example. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, we've uh, 400 candidates in our first three months. We're now over 1,600. Um, we've connected uh, 30 candidates to employment. It's now over 134. Uh, we've got about 450 candidates into training and um, we've tracked about 150 now who've completed their training. Next slide, please. So um, this is where we talked about then providers we're engaging, we're engaging with on their size and the graph's pretty self-explanatory. We're up to around 80% uh, of small providers now. So you can see that we've contacted just about everyone in Queensland. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so as of a week or so ago, it was 1,350. It's now over, well over 1,600. We've now got well over 400 candidates submitted to employers and 134, 135, I think now uh, into employment. Uh, we are seeing the leads uh, um, that we're generating and we're seeing that the processing of HR systems at a provider level is really clogging the system up. Um, some providers can take eight weeks to recruit people. Uh, I can tell you that from our data, in the first week, 10% of the leads uh, dr drop off. After two weeks, 20% of leads have um, uh, said they don't want to engage. And after three weeks, half of the leads are gone. And so with providers who are taking up to eight weeks, they're finding the people have found employment elsewhere. So if there's one lesson out of today is that you need to move quick in your HR systems, you need to be nimble and you need to be interviewing candidates within the first seven days. Otherwise, their interest starts to drop off from the sector. Um, we've uh, had a concept of Lazarusing students. It's over 440 odd students. We've um, re-engaged in their studies as part of this process by working with RTOs. We're in the process of working with Safe Queensland to Lazarus several thousand of their students with emails and um, social media campaigns. And our, just our website alone has had um, some hits. So we're um, some organic hits uh, around 200 now. And um, we've had about 150 career hubs registrants because we've opened it up and we're now running that in a micro session weekly um, all across Southeast Queensland. And they're generating um, 10 to 20 jobs a week. So that's very exciting that employers can talk to around 10 or 20 candidates in an hour and then schedule them for second interviews the following week and employ them in the third week. And moving quickly is the message that's coming out of our project and our project data is showing if after three weeks, half your candidates are gone. If your process, HR processes are longer than two weeks, you are missing candidates. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so what we've now gone to the rest of Queensland. Um, Craig uh, Dunkeld in Cairns will be pleased to know we've officially got staff members in Cairns, uh, Townsville and Rockhampton starting next month. Um, and we're looking for candidates out west and we're working with the Western Queensland um, Primary Health Network who have around 70% of the state of Queensland as their catchment area, which is um, out in the outback essentially, to stand up projects out west. Um, we're planning forums like we did in South East Queensland for up north and out west as we're, as we're staffing up. They'll be happening at the end of this month and early October. And uh, we've started a webinar and masterclass series for home care providers in September, October, November. And that's delivered by Andrew Marty, an organisational psychologist uh, from Melbourne. And um, the topics include staff engagement, wellbeing and workforce trends. Next slide, please. <laughs> Um, so again, we're, our first uh, weekly career hub uh, happens is happening as we speak right now, today, the 14th. Um, we've got a series of storytelling series with home care providers planned to build some media content and video content and promotional content, of course, of the sector and a day in the life of a personal care worker and how that's impacting mm -hmm. people who are being able to stay independent in their own homes for longer. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a partnership uh, we're developing now with Workforce Australia. We've got a special project team we've pulled together to actually stand that side of it up and we're going to be um, attracting and training job seekers across the Southeast Queensland. And the essence of that is that people who are keen to come to the sector will be screened in. They'll then be interviewed by a uh, series of employees, a bit like the career hubs. The employers will choose who they want to hire 
And then out of that, we will then get them trained in the entry into care role skill set so that they can come into the sector with three out of 13 units of competency completed of their certificate three individual support. And that'll get them to around 60 to 70 percent of home care work, which is domestic assistance, transport, social support, um, meal preparation, et cetera. Those are lower level, lower care activities as opposed to the high care, personal care, uh, medication assistance, uh, feeding um, people who have swallowing dysphagia problems, et cetera. Um, and we're also in the project now of um, uh, standing up our Indigenous and called strategies as part of this project. Uh, Nick. Next slide. There you go. That's us. Um, we're uh, we're um, here. My background is uh, CEO of a home care organisation for six years. We grew our staffing enormously. Uh, we went from twenty staff and one point seven million, and uh, to one twenty million dollars a year. One hundred and thirty staff plus thirty nurses. So uh, what we're doing in this project is exactly what I've been doing for the last six years. It can happen in the sector if you put the right strategies and methodologies in. Okay. Um, and I'm finished now because I think I might be slightly over time, so I apologise, Eliza. Thank you, David. Um, uh, that was really informative. I'm learning stuff while you're talking too, so great, um, great presentation. I'm going to conclude session one presentations. Um, I think there was a list of key contacts and links. Um, and if you do have any questions, um, or you're really interested in getting involved, and I'm hoping that's the whole point of this webinar is that we, we get people um, uh, to get in contact and use uh, all these measures. Um, there's a list of um, um, contacts, and please please contact your local state and territory office as well. Um, it's question and answer time. Um, I've got a couple of questions to follow up that have been in the chat. Um, uh, one of them was, does the payment include resi and home care? This is for the registered nurses payment. Yes, it does. And do IPC leads fall under the training responsibilities for the additional payment? Um, and yes, it does. Um, another question was what date will the payment uh, flow to providers? Uh, it will, um, the payment, uh, clo the application closes at the start of December. So uh, we will assess it from then and try and get out um, payments as soon as possible. So I think we're anticipating from mid-January uh, getting payments to providers because um, we've got to make an assessment. And yes, the payments are made to the provider because it allows us to do it in bulk and then the provider would pass the, um, the payment on to the um, registered nurse. Um, looking at some other questions, um, Oh, it, it, for, with the exception of um, nurse practitioners who apply on their own behalf, uh, but further detail is on the um, available on the department's website. Um, I'm just looking at other questions. I think I've, I think I've done those. Um, uh, which of these initiatives available for public sector residential aged care services? Um, is the payment available for public sector? Looking at my folks, we will find out and get back to you. Um, oh, this is a good one. Okay, is the is this directed at Cert three individual support or equivalent roles, or is it broader? Okay, yeah, scroll. Okay, yeah, broader to include home care services employers like kitchen and laundry. Um, I think it's it's personal care workers. Well, it is personal care workers. So, um, but that's not to say that there isn't an opportunity uh, for um, kitchen and laundry staff to upskill and to uh, retrain as personal care workers. Um, I think we have to look at that as a pipeline as well. I don't know, David, you've got some views on that um, about utilising people who are already in the aged care system and. Uh, retraining, I uh, said so they're already feeling about retraining them to become personal care workers. Yeah, we, we are we are seeing a number of candidates come through who are wanting to reskill and upskill. Uh, we're also seeing, in, because we're specifically targeting home care, around 10 to 15 percent of our candidates coming through the project don't drive, they don't have a license, and don't have a car. So we are getting them in and getting them trained, and we're pushing them back out to residential care. Okay. Um, so there is residential care workers being produced by our project. Um, uh, so take some comfort that we will, and around 10%, so around 250 uh, candidates that we get out of our 
two and a half thousand, two and a half thousand plus two fifty will will be um, residential workers in Queensland. Thanks, David. Thank uh, another question was, does the Workforce Support Program support DHSP providers? Yes, it does. Um, uh, and uh, just let me read this one. So this is a question, David, this is a good one for you. As providers, we must ask candidates to supply a variety of background checks prior to employing. Are you preparing workers with this information so that organisations can move more quickly through the recruitment process? Yeah, so so we are screening as candidates are drawing towards us. Like I said, I think we had 1,607 applicants as of uh, the start of this seminar. And as we finish, it's probably around 1,620. We're getting candidates at all hours of the day, seven days a week. And we are screening for police checks. We are screening for driver's licence. We are screening for, in Queensland, the working with children check, as an example, um, or the uh, working with uh, people with disability. Six out of 10 Queensland home providers do NDIS as well. So we're screening for all of those because they'll cross train into both fields. Great, thanks, David. Um, and I think we've got some feedback about making sure that um, uh, the um, web link for all the different providers um, have uh, some good um, uh, information on there about the Home Care Workforce Support Program. So we will provide that specific feedback to that organisation. It's not yours, um, David, um, uh, just to make sure that uh, you've got ready access to um, uh, um, the Home Care Workforce Support Program and how it's um, how you can get that support. Um, another quick question was, uh, was about NDIS checks. Um, um, do you assist with that, David? I guess we're, yeah. Yes. That's one of the screening questions. So the NDIS check can take two hours up to three or four weeks. It just depends on the candidate. There's no rhyme or reason. Yeah. Um, but we do screen for that. And some candidates come with it, others don't. So we suggest they go ahead and get it done as they're going through the recruitment process. Uh, worst case scenario, providers can get that done at the end of the recruitment, but always good to start it as soon as possible because it is time consuming. Great. Thank you. Thank you, David. I might close off questions now. Uh, we will... Anything we haven't answered, we will uh, answer and we will and we will circulate that to um, webinar attendees. Um, so I am now going to be welcoming um, Jane Watts, um, not Jim Kennedy. Jane Watts from um, Dua to uh, take over the um, the next session. Thanks, Jane. Thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, and thank you, Eliza and the Department of Health and Aged Care for hosting today's session. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Jane Watts. I'm an employer liaison officer with the Department of Employment and Workplace Relations. And today I'm joining you from Ngunnawal country. Also joining us is um, Andrew Broadfoot, an employment facilitator from the local jobs program. And she'll talk about the care and support sector initiatives in South Australia. And my colleague, Karen Lavery is also here today and she's going to help me with the Q&A later on. So just a quick overview before I start. Um, the focus of today's conversation is on a range of programs and supports that are available to help business attract and recruit workers to the care and support sector. The information is employer focused, but we think it's useful for other stakeholders attending today just to have a broad awareness. I'm more than happy to take Q&As at the end of this session uh, and my colleague, colleague Karen will help coordinate these. There's also an opportunity to ask Andrea questions about the Local Jobs Program initiatives. And as Eliza mentioned, a copy of this presentation will be made available to you via the Department of Health and Aged Care. <clears throat> so I, I just want to focus um, and acknowledge first that there are extreme workforce shortages in the health and care sector um, that the health and care sector are facing. This sector was hit very hard by COVID and that was on top of already projected industry shortages. The unemployment rate has fallen to its lowest in 48 years and the slide that we'll see in a few moments will show how drastic that is. Um, and it's leading to competition of workers across multiple sectors. It's leading to um, competition for workers across multiple sectors. 
Although it should be noted that unemployment, the unemployment rate is variable across cohorts like youth and also in regional areas. So it's not 3.4% across the board. Shortages and other factors disrupting business operations are also impacting other industries from hospitality, tourism, retail and transport, and even into construction. While I'm here to talk about Workforce Australia today, the unemployment service to assist unemployed people to enter or re-enter the workforce, the factors play um, in, a, in the broader labour market, and they're also at play in Workforce Australia caseload. Industry and employers will need to consider ways to help remove some of the barriers and stand, uh, sorry, the barriers that stand between individuals and gainful employment. There's no one solution through industry collaboration and real engagement with employment services and other government initiatives. There are solutions available to support business attract and recruit the workforce that they need. So you may wish to consider how you recruit using pathways you may not have previously engaged with. A multi-pronged approach may be the answer, and employment services now may be part of that broader strategy. So moving on, um, I'll pro provide you with a high-level overview of Workforce Australia, of the Workforce Australia model, particularly as it relates to supporting employers with their workforce needs. I know that some of you have already been working really closely with our department through employer liaison officers such as myself and Karen, and at a local level with some of our state officers and employment facilitators. These functions are available to help businesses navigate their way through the other services and supports that are available. They can help you identify if self-serving through our online supports would work best for you, or if working with our provider network would be better. And they're particularly knowledgeable about the range of programs and services you can tap into and develop tailored pathways or coordinated recruitment activities for you. So they're a good entry point, either at the local or a national level, to access assistance and potential workforces. So key points about Workforce Australia. Workforce Australia replaced the Job Active program from July this year. Our services are free and continue to be free to business unit users. The most job-ready job seekers can be sourced directly by you online um, using our supports. And we still have employment service provider networks. And this, this network has a stronger focus now on supporting people who need the most help to get into work. And they have some of the same tools and some new tools to help prepare and support those people to be suitable candidates for your entry-level positions. So, Workforce Australia, slide please. Workforce Australia for Business. Here's a high-level snapshot of the services available to employers under Workforce Australia. And to understand how the new model works for business, let's look at Anna, our employer, and her user journey. Anna owns an aged care business in Western Sydney called Total Care, and she needs staff. Anna has access to an online platform that will direct her to employment services that best suit her needs. And this could be Workforce Australia Online, Workforce Australia Employment Service Providers, Workforce Specialist Support through the department's complementary support services. And I'll explain more about this as we move through the presentation. If Anna recruits through Workforce Australia Online, she can self-manage her recruitment needs and use the online platform to find suitable candidates. It provides a pool of job-ready individuals, tools to filter and search for suitable candidates, and assistance with hiring and workforce planning. Anna can advertise all of her jobs online. She can find applicants, filter and shortlist candidates. There are also a number of user guides on the platform which help with this process and they're quite thorough and they will help you to support you with accessing our online supports. I'll briefly touch on a couple of features of the platform. So in this slide, this is how it works for Anna. Anna can log in to workforceaustralia.gov.au and Anna can view candidates 
that have expressed an interest in the type of child roles that she wants to fill. And this is through their online profiles. So candidates go on, they can um, put information and resumes about themselves, they can indicate what industry sectors that they're interested in and create a profile that Anna can then view. Anna can also create a business profile to attract candidates to her business. Anna can access a recruitment platform to advertise all of her jobs and she can personalise screening questions. So there's an opportunity there to really tailor your ads. You can put in specific questions or you can leave free text in there so that you know that the candidates that are interested in your jobs are really interested in your jobs. You can use, Anna can use tools to filter and search and shortlist individuals, including into those who might be a good fit, maybes, or those that are unsuitable. Anna can then contact the individuals all in one place and at a time that suits her. So now if Anna chooses to recruit individuals through Workforce Australia employment service providers, she can work with the providers to shortlist and pre-screen candidates, suitable candidates. So that's screen, match and refer. And that'll take some of the time out and effort out of Anna's initial steps in her recruitment process. There are also a range of workforce, a range of experienced Workforce Australia providers able to support Anna's business and deliver tailored recruitment services to suit her business needs. So there's, for example, specialist licence providers, and they support a range of candidates from different cohorts. For example, cold candidates, refugees and Indigenous candidates. So you can work with those specialist providers or with the generalist providers to find suitable candidates for your business. There are other providers that support young people and parents get into the workforce if that's how you would like to diversify your business. So what do they do? So part of Workforce Australia providers' role is to work really closely with employers to understand their needs and tailor pathways. For example, this could include organising training to suit the employer's needs and other supports. It could be offering post-placement support for ind individuals once they're employed to help them settle in and make the journey smoother for everyone. Workforce Australia providers can help prepare participants for Anna's business too, through tailored employability skills training, accredited and eligible employer specific training, OHS training, police checks, etc., providing equipment to the candidates and PPE if that's what's required, and also assisting them with transport, which we heard earlier can be a real challenge for young people um, in particular who are trying to enter the workforce. So Workforce Australia providers can also facilitate access to wage subsidies to help the, with the cost of hiring eligible staff. So Anna can find a workforce that is right for her business, all at no cost to her business using Workforce Australia supports. So how do you find a provider? So when you go on to Workforce Australia, you can search for a provider that's near you um, you can search by the type of services that they offer and you can search by location and a list will come up and you can find out how to contact them. So the third element is complementary services. The department also runs a dedicated national customer service line to assist business to connect with services and these complementary supports and we'll provide some details of that later in the slide. So I'll unpack supports available to you. Launch into Work offers employer, employers a different way of recruiting. It's, a, it's suitable for employers that have multiple entry-level job opportunities, usually a minimum of 10 vacancies. So the projects are co-designed with the employer and tailored to the needs to your, of your business. So briefly, individuals are selected based on values and attributes, which is really important in the care and support sector. There are several essential components to each of the Launch Into Work projects or must-haves. So there has to be a component that's accredited and non-accredited training, practical activities, participant mentoring, 
and importantly, employment for all participants who complete the project. Usually the projects run for between four to 12 weeks. So I'll give you an example on the next slide, just very briefly, uh, of a launch into work project uh, for the aged care sector. This project had multiple roles in the home care, in home care services and there were 10 community support workers required. The outcome from this particular project was that there was a retention after six months of nine out of the 10 participants, which is a great result for the employer. The program was delivered through accredited training, few units of competency from the Cert 3 and individual support, non-accredited training, industry specific skills, mentoring, workplace shadowing and work experience. There are other examples on our website that you may be interested in, particularly in dis disability support as well. So the next complementary support is the Local Jobs Program. Local Jobs has a, a, a range of strings to its bow. The two things that are probably the most interest to you are the Employment Facilitators and the Local Recovery Fund. Employment facilitators are a network of 51 locally focused facilitators across the country. And if you don't know your local employment facilitator, please, the take home today is you might want to touch bases with them. They're very well connected across their regions and they can help find services and relationships that might work for you. So they each have a local jobs plan and a job skills task force which work on priorities for the region and that includes in particular the health and care sector across most of those 51 regions. So it's well worth connecting with them to see how they can be of assistance. The Local Recovery Fund can support employment pathways for multiple vacancies and can be co-designed to meet the needs of industry and employers in the region. And, and help support, support local jobs. So your employment facilitator in your region can tell you about the local recovery fund, they can tell you projects that are currently underway, or they can work with you to develop tailored projects. To get the feel of the types of initiatives happening in the health and care sector, I'd like to introduce Andrea Broadfoot. She's the employment facilitator for North West Country Employment Service Region in South Australia, and she'll share some of the initiatives that are happening in that region with you. Thanks. Thanks, Jane. Hi there. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the Bungala people on country where we live, serve and play in North West Country, South Australia. Australia and today I'm working from the Ngurramal country in northern New South Wales. I pay my respects to all Aboriginal people on the country around Australia. Employment facilitators are independent contractors working to ensure the range of programs and funding designed to support employers get the workforce you need are known about and can be accessed. <clears throat> Our primary goal is local people into local jobs. And then we are the wedding planners for the range of other programs funded by government. This includes the whole suite of federal government and also state government programs and funding, plus any other initiatives that are going. In regional South Australia, we recognise that developing the workforce for the aged care and support sector is a busy space. And so to work smart and ensure a strategic, effective and action focused approach, we have a care and support sector working party, which is a collaboration between employment facilitator teams and boosting the local care workforce regional coordinators in South Australia. We developed three main priorities, workforce development, which includes upskilling careers and capacity building, workforce pipeline pathways and promotion, and collaboration, connection and innovation. From here, we work to identify and connect in program services and supports available to address your workforce needs, map and promote the program services and supports, including key outputs and outcomes, and ensure that employers are able to access the appropriate support at the right time through solutions focused local on the ground engagement. We identify need as well as opportunities. We problem solve and prioritise solutions in collaboration to address those challenges and opportunities. We implement tailored responses to workforce challenges. We minimise duplication of effort and identify gaps for additional resourcing. From that foundation, we have a range of initiatives happening in our regions. 
For example, we've held interactive forums with presentations from other industry areas on how they secure a workforce. Sometimes it is about our systems or people in the right places, like workplace mentors for new workers who have good rapport, or enterprise-based trainers so you can train on the job the way you want your people to be in your workplace. We put together pre-employment training projects. Jobs for Locals is our flagship local recovery funded project in Northwest Country. So far it has run nine programs across three cities with the care and support sector a key feature. There is a video you can view that shows Jobs for Locals. The link for the video is in the slide you will receive post webinar for your viewing pleasure. Jobs for Locals is going really well. We have people lining up to take part and employers waiting at the other end to employ local people into their vacancies. We, are no, we know there are many people doing wonderful work to support you get the workers you need. To help employers navigate the options, we have put together a quarterly care and support sector workforce alert. Examples include the Launch Into Work program that Jane spoke about that can fund employers directly for pre-employment programs where you need to recruit 10 employees or more at a time, and employment facilitators can assist link you into that program and funding opportunities. We have used our alert to survey employers and find out what the focus of forums or information sharing needs to be to best meet your needs. Part of our team is Lisa Brock, another employment facilitator in the Mid North region adjacent to Northwest Country. And Lisa's team put together a care and support sector employment guide, which got information from a whole range of employers about their requirements, including training prerequisites, screening checks, employment types, and other requirements, including smartphone, working email, computer literacy, driver's license, own car insurance, etc. Um, that, you know, which was brought up in the question earlier to David about getting that framework right so that that HR practice can happen seamlessly and, and quickly. Lisa's also been working on a care and support sector careers hub, which employers have advocated for in her region, a proposal for a shop front where care providers and potential employees can intersect, which she's looking to get funded. Lisa has been working with the Council of the Ageing in South Australia on promoting older workers or retirees back into the sector for part-time work opportunities and to relieve the stress on your current workforce. This has included case studies and will involve promotional partnerships with local media. And she's just looking at a platform which may be as simple as a Facebook group for the region that connects older workers into your jobs. We are contributing to research projects like advanced apprenticeships, and policy discussions like broadening eligibility for people into our pre-employment programs to unlock the hidden workforce that might not be as linked to an employment, might not be linked to an employment services provider or might be a young person whose parents earn too much to be eligible for welfare support. Our employment facilitator teams get to feedback monthly to our national office team who are also working hard to solve the issues we see the aged care and support sector facing now. Our roles exist so you don't have to know everything that is going on. Your employment facilitator is funded until 2025 until all, in all employment regions across Australia to assist you connect your, to your workforce and to train, retain and grow your teams. For me, I'm interested in look, who's looking after me when I'm old and we're making subtle plans for who's look, looking after my folks when they decide they might be old, although I can't see that happening anytime soon. I'm currently in Glen Innes, coming to you live from the home of my partner's 92-year-old mother who's thriving within home care support. So reach out to your employment facilitator and ask them what's happening through projects and programs in your region so we can partner and work together to ensure we have quality, well-looked-after workers in the most important industry sector caring for our older Australians in our regions. Thanks for all you do and I'll now pass back to Jane. Thanks very much for that. That was really interesting, Andrew. I really appreciate you attending, particularly because you're on holidays up that way at the moment. So appreciate your support. So just quickly, another initiative is the Workforce Specialist Initiative. It's commencing from um, in October, and it's going to be a new network of specialists, workforce specialists, um, who will deliver projects to meet workforce needs of industry, especially those industries that have really large scale and labour and skills shortages. Workforce specialists will work collaboratively collaboratively with industry and with businesses, the department and other employment service providers to deliver these projects. And there's more information available on our Workforce Specialist website, our department's website. 
So the other uh, the department also has a number of employer liaison officers, ELOs, which are dedicated to some significant Australian industries that have recognised need for broad investment and planning for current and future workforce needs. ELOs can work with industry and large employers to source, co-design and develop solutions while not limited to draw on our employment services. Both Karen and I are ELOs and Karen is taking the primary carriage supporting the health and care sector. So I'll introduce her shortly. ELOs help employers to access employment services through Workforce Australia, and they also tap into all departmental initiatives that are best fit, best fit for their specific need. So for example, those are the Launch to Work programs, the local jobs programs, and workforce specialists, which I've already mentioned. So if you want to reach out to Karen directly, there will be a, a contact um, point at the end of this presentation. Next um, thing, opportunity that I'd like to tell you about is the department's hosting a series of monthly webinars in collaboration with different industries to profile their careers and their jobs currently in demand. And these are promoted out um, to those individuals who are interested, registered um, to come along and find out about um, those particular industries. So we're casting the net wide um, with the job showcases to provide information to anyone who might be interested in a job or a career in the sector in question. A care and support sector jobs showcase is planned for the 11th of October and the idea is that we'll have speakers there talking about the roles available, we'll have an employer talking about um, how to apply for jobs and we'll also have some information about where to find the jobs that are available. Skills and Training Initiative. Um, I'll just, just briefly mention we're going to have a skills and training um, webinar hosted by the Department of Health and Aged Care shortly. Um, and in that webinar, we'll be talking about Australian apprenticeships and incentives. Uh, we'll be having some VET alumni attend from the health and care sector to talk about their career journeys. And we'll also have um, information and details on fee-free TAFE announcements um, and apprenticeships and apprenticeship support um, subsidies. So please note that that's coming up on the 26th of October. The other thing I'd like to point out too is most of you would be aware of the job trainer um, program that ends, so enrolments must occur in that program by the end of the 31st of December. So the um, Palms Pacific Australia Labor, Labor Mobility Scheme. Traditionally, this scheme was focused on assisting um, recruiting seasonal workers. Just to bring to your attention though, there's currently two interesting pilot projects underway, trialling different training pathways um, to, with the objective to increase the number of qualified Pacific aged care workers. So one of these initiatives, there's 14 Fijian women completing the first part of their aged care qualification, and they're travelling to Australia for supervised work um, placements to finish that training. And the second pilot has 26 Samoan workers in Northern Territory, and they're completing the required training in Australia while working in aged care facilities. So these are interesting pilots. It is for information only, um, but it demonstrates the breadth of work that the department is doing to help the workforce needs of this sector. So key contacts, these will be available after the presentation. Um, as, as mentioned before by Eliza, um, and we'll send them out to you. There'll be active links there that you can click on to go and find out more information. And you can see the number down the bottom. Um, it's, it's for the National Customer Service Line, which is your first point of contact if you don't know who to contact. So please don't hesitate to reach out. And now I'd like to move into the Q&A session and hand over to Karen. Um, please put your questions into the, the Q&A chat that was um, down the bottom of your screen and we'll answer as many questions as we can. So thanks, Karen. Hello. Um, good morning or afternoon, everyone, depending on where you're joining us from in Australia. Um, as Jane uh, mentioned, I'm an employee liaison officer and uh, Jane and myself work in the industry engagement team. Now, Jane, we do have 
a question. We've got a couple here that have come up. Um, have you got any suggestions on what I can do when job seekers seeking work apply for a job with my organisation, but when I call them, they're not interested? So, um, look, thanks for that question. We, we do get that one from time to time from employers. So the department really welcomes feedback from employers. Um, if you have a question or would like to give feedback, you can get in touch with us. So you can call the employer hotline on 131715, or you can email us on the National Customer Service line at desi.gov.au. So um, we can always also help you with employment queries and advice to our programs and employment services on these lines as well. So um, contact details are available on the Workforce Australia for business and um, also on that contact slide that, that Jane had at the end of the presentation. And so also like in this instance, if you're, if um, the person who asked this uh, question, in this instance, you can also talk to your provider as well, um, feed it back to your provider. Um, look, I think there's another tip and trick and a, a suggestion. Um, is to also, with Workforce Australia um, Online for Business, um, there's some really good tools there as well. So there's things like um, screening um, tools, screening questions, so that will um, help when those that are applying have the right skills and, and attributes that you're, you're wanting. So I think there's some really good helpful hints there. Um, I've also got another one here, Jane. Um, are there apprenticeship wage subsidies and hiring incentives available? So I yes. might take take that one. Did you want to talk to yeah, that one? I'm happy to take that one. Yes, the um, apprenticeship uh, Australian apprenticeship incentive scheme is available, particularly for um, this sector. So this was identified as one of the priority. Um, industries that's supported through that program. Um, there is an information available on, on our department's apprenticeship site, or you can uh, contact an Australian Apprenticeship Support Network member um, to talk about your needs. And we'll be giving a lot more detailed information at that October the 26th seminar, which will solely focus on the skills and training and apprenticeship system for this sector. So thanks for the question. Are there yeah, any Karen? Yeah, yeah, I do. I have a, a couple more happening um, and a little bit along the lines of um, um, can I contact someone if I'm experiencing tech difficulties or having questions or feedback? So tech difficulties, I'm understanding with um, Workforce Australia online for business. So I'm assuming that's what they mean with the tech difficulties. Yeah, look, again, that that um, that's similar to the last question, um, call our um, employer hotline. So the 131715 number or email the National Customer Service line at desi.gov.au. So um, those are available um, in the slides, as I said, and they're also available on Workforce Australia. Um, uh, here we go. Can you explain more the functions of Workforce Australia for business? Where can I get help? Well, we, we sort of answered that. But there also is uh, some additional help. Um, uh, there's a range of user step-by-step -step guidelines found at Workforce Australia for business. So you go under About Us and How to Use Our Services. So there's some really good, um, easy-to-follow guides. Uh, guides such as registering a business account, creating a business profile, finding a candidate, creating a, a job ad, um, advertise an apprenticeship, manage job adverts, review and manage candidates, manage wage subsidies. So there's some really good help there available. Uh, this one also talks about workforce Australia for Business. Can I shortlist list candidates? Jane, you touched on this in your presentation. Yes. Would you like to so expand think, on that one? 
Yeah, thank you. I think one of the important things about a Workforce Australia online and advertising your positions there is you can really tailor your um, requirements and that can sort of sort through candidates. As I mentioned, those who are very suitable that you want to follow up with and contact, those that you're just not interested in. So uh, we, we do hear that people um, to meet their mutual ob obligations do sometimes apply for a job and they're not really interested. So what you can do is put in some questions that will really tease that out. So ask them to write in 20 words, you know, why they really want to be considered for the job. And you'll quickly get a view and you can put them and sort them into a different um, into a different section and only contact the people that you think you want to speak to. So I think that's nearly all the questions we have now, Karen. I um, I'd like to, to, I can't see any more online. I think that's correct. So I might yeah. hand back over. I might say first, uh, again, thank you very much for having us today and please do reach out um, and find out more information if you need to on any of the initiatives I've spoken about. So thank you very much, Eliza. Thanks, Jane, Karen and Andrea. Um, hope I'm back up. So before we conclude, I also um, want to talk about various scholarship opportunities um, that are now available through the Australian College of Nursing for personal care workers, nurses and allied health professionals working in aged care. These scholarships include the study, study areas of palliative care, dementia care and infection prevention and control, as well as courses that enhance leadership or clinical skills. Applications for these scholarships close on Monday, 10th of October, 2022, and before our next webinar. So I really want to encourage you to promote these opportunities to your staff. They can get more information on the ACN, you can get more information on the ACN website um, at um, www.acn.edu.au um, backslash scholarships, it's up there anyway. Um, I also want to mention, I think Jane just mentioned as well, we've got a skills and training webinar scheduled for the 26th of October. This webinar will outline programs that can help uplift the skills of your workers and also increase the pipeline of workers into the sector. So please, I want to encourage you to look out for the details about this webinar, which will come up in our newsletter and engagement hub and through the engagement hub as well. And upon completion of this webinar, I'm also going to remind people that there's a short survey that's going to pop up on your screen. We want to encourage you to um, complete the survey, which will help us to make some improvements to upcoming webinars as part of the employer engagement series. Uh, before I let you all go, I also just wanted to acknowledge, as Jane did, that um, uh, we know that, that um, providers and workers are doing it really tough at the moment, that it's uh, workforce is the number one issue facing providers at the moment. Um, I don't think we want to pretend that, that any single measure is the solution to our workforce issues. Uh, we, we've got a range of measures that I think are all aimed at helping you um, and we, we all feel like we're in this together. And so I want to encourage you to um, reach out. I know people are busy and it's hard to get past when particularly do people are dealing with COVID outbreaks still and um, workforce shortages that are not just in the aged care sector across the across many sectors. Um, the, the other uh, additional questions we had um, that are not related to this webinar, but I think go broadly to the issues facing the workforce was, you know, how do we also encourage recruitment and attention, uh, retention through uh, wages? And I wanted to, um, point out to people that um, I, I'm sure that you already know that the Fair Work Commission is considering um, the aged care wages case at the moment and the government provided a submission in support of that wage case um, uh, last month and um, we are as much as you eagerly awaiting the decision from the Fair Work Commission on this case uh, which we think uh, an increased wages for aged care workers is going to do uh, a lot um, for um, uh, our ability or your ability to recruit um, and retain workers. Um, also acknowledging that many of your existing workforce are very tired, um, but they uh, are um, unwavering in their commitment to aged care. And we very, very much appreciate and applaud uh, the workforce and all that you do um, 
So I just wanted to note that um, and uh, really happy for people to reach out to the department and please provide your feedback in the survey uh, so we can make sure that these sessions are, are useful to you and a useful part of your time. And if there's additional things that you think would be helpful, we're really happy to hear that. So thank you again for attending and taking the time out of what is no doubt your very busy day um, to, uh, to be part of this. Um, and um, I also uh, want to remind people that um, we've recorded this session. So um, it'll also be available if you want to uh, share it with someone who wasn't able to make it or you want to re-watch it. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, I will. We will sign off on um, the webinar. Thanks. Thanks all to all the presenters too.